Hi everyone, this is Alex Treviño, a 3D artist from Mexico. As a self-taught artist, I work on all sorts of projects using Blender and Substance Painter, and I want to share my process with you. I'm thrilled to present the second part as we continue the Lunar Rover series. In this video, I will show you how I model the character. Check out the previous video to learn more about the vehicle modeling process. I explain a detailed walkthrough in the video, giving you insights into the techniques and methods used. The concept is the Lunar Rover Vehicle by Matthias Adolfsson and if you want to see more of his work, check out his social media or his website. Before starting, I want to address essential topics like apply all transforms, phase orientation and the project's scope. By simply understanding these key concepts, you can fix possible complications of the upcoming tasks. When we change a mesh in our 3D projects, sometimes applying modifiers and sculpting alone may not give us the desired result. In such cases, we have a handy solution called Apply All Transforms that help us fix these issues. Occasionally, newly created faces may display inverted normals, causing multiple problems. And to avoid this, inspect the direction of the normals using the viewport overlays. And in this case, of any inverted normals, use the recalculate outside tool to fix the issue. Setting the right expectations before we dive in into this tutorial is crucial. The model we will be working, it is not intended for animation purposes, because the primary goal is to create a compelling 3D visualization that effectively transmits the concept's essence and aesthetics. Once again, I use Photoshop to paint the different parts, focusing only on the character. This approach clarifies the character's construction, making the process more accessible and understandable. And with that, we are not ready to begin modeling the character. During this initial phase of blocking, I simultaneously tackle blocking out the character. At this stage, the character was constructed using only subdivided cubes as the basic building blocks. After the blocking phase, I get into the process of the helmet detailing. I start by handling the visor, adjusting the helmet proportions in sculpt mode, and finally tweaking the topology to create a loop in the visor area. Then incorporate the breastplate below the helmet and add details around the visor, adding planes with a solidify modifier. Next, shape the earpiece, planning the topology to ensure a seamless fit, and lastly, cables, handles, and small accessories. The most used modifier for this part was mirror to maintain symmetry through all the process, especially in constructing the helmet. For the best, I began modeling the shoulder area using the mirror and solidify modifiers. Then I extruded certain faces in the abdomen and back area and connected them. After that, I replaced the subdivision modifier with the multi-resolution to add fine details and use sculpting brushes like Inflate, Blob and Draw Sharp. Now, creating the globs, I employ a short process. I start by using multiple subdivided cubes for the hand and a cylinder for the wrist. In sculpt mode, I adjust the shape using the grab brush. After that, I combine all the parts to simplify the mesh and perform an automatic retopology in sculpt mode. Then, I use this mesh as the foundation to make a manual retopology. To this new retopo version, I add the shrink wrap modifier, and lastly, using the grab brush, I refine the globs appearance in sculpt mode. To make the boots, I use the blocking previously made, then I duplicate the mesh to create the clips and add some loops to split the bottom of the boot sole. To create the arms and legs, I use the blocking meshes and join them all together. Then I position them in sculpt mode and add details using the inflate and blob brushes. And lastly, uh, let's address the knee and elbow pads. I start by adding a plane using the solidify and shrink wrap modifiers to create basic form. And once I'm satisfied with the design, I apply the modifiers and make a slight shape adjustments in sculpt mode using the grab brush. I have been using a high performance GPU such as the 3080 Ti in Blender, which has multiple advantages. I witnessed an improved performance in real-time rendering, reducing rendering time. This enhancement has dramatically boosted my efficiency and productivity, allowing me to work more effectively on projects. And this is it. We have finished the character. 
Now we know the importance of applying all transforms and checking the phase orientation to overcome potential complications and the main steps to make a basic character. And in the next video, I will show you the process of making the UVs to have a great starting point for the textures. Also, do not forget to join the community and showcase your talent by sharing your creation with the hashtag StudioShare. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more content like this, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell and see you in the next video.